The Lego Architecture Great Pyramid of Giza is an absolutely beautiful set. I happen to love the hidden features and the playful colors and the fact that I'm building something I was obsessed with as a child. However, there is one big glaring issue. Regardless of this design being intentional, it's not complete. I can't help feel cheated in some way. I didn't get the satisfying feeling of completeness. You know, the moment where you get to step back and give your newly completed Lego set a good 5, 10 second or even 30 minute stare. So to address this, I'll show you how I built the complete Great Pyramid of Giza. That means I would have to build the second half of the Great Pyramid, and that means I had to order two sets. I have to give a big shout out to Zabi for supplying these two sets early, as I didn't want to have to wait until August to get my hands on these here in the US. So if you're looking to get your hands on some Lego sets early, or looking to find some hard to find sets like the 10300 DeLorean Time Machine, yes, they have it in stock as of today, I would suggest using Zavi. They've updated their shipping times to three to five business days, and if you use code BRIK, B-R-I-Q, you could save 10% on your full Lego purchase. Now back to the pyramid. Luckily, when you look at the back half of the pyramid, you do notice Lego did place two Technic 1x2 bricks with axle holes to attach the second half of the pyramid. Definitely makes it a lot easier, so I'm happy about that. Now, in order to do this right, it's not gonna be as simple as just building two of these sets and then jamming them together. I want this design to feel cohesive. Like this is the way it should have came out of the box straight from Lego. However, I also wanted to utilize as many of the pieces as I can from the second set. Then after exhausting all possible pieces, then and only then, I might have to resort to stealing some pieces from other sets I have lying around. So the first thing I would have to tackle would be that base. I know I needed to encompass the enclosure wall, plus a little more for some sand dunes. I decided to cut off the base at the end of the third 8x6 plate. This allowed for a clean and simple modification. It also gave me more than enough room to fit the pyramid, the enclosure wall, and some landscaping. Unfortunately, just to get to this point, I already had to steal some pieces, mainly from the unbuilt Boss Isley Cantina. But I'm actually quite happy with the rear design already. I wanted to give the same overall design from the front shore of the Nile, and LEGO did this by layering dark tan plates, so I did the same. With the base now completed, it was time to move towards the inner pyramid. This is where it got a little more complicated. I wanted to be able to separate the pyramid and reveal the inner tombs and passageways just like the first half. However, I wanted them to line up as if I just simply cut the complete pyramid in half. This means I would need to switch the side of the passageways from what the instructions outlined. Sounded easy enough? However, I simply just couldn't flip it, as this would cause the 4x2 wedge brick to converge on the wrong side and I didn't have the pieces on hand to make this change. So what I would need to do is keep the building ramp placement identical to what the instructions outlined and just modify the side in which the passageways were placed. However, this means I did have to grab a few more pieces from Moss Isley. Fortunately, this was the most difficult part of the build. Now all I had to do was build the outside of the second pyramid, no mods needed. And here it is. With the second half of the Great Pyramid complete, it's time to connect them. Just add the two axle pins and This is the way it was meant to be. This feels 